why did you decide to pick up this project? Uh, what what was the appeal? Well, um, this guy, Jonathan Flegg, I actually worked with Jonathan uh, on several recordings before this, but never met him, only over the internet. And he, he'd email me stuff, and mail would put it in the mail. And uh, so I would, I would get these projects from him, and we'd talk on the phone. He was always the nicest, sweetest, uh, most understanding guy, and really genuinely thankful for all the work that I did. And so I kept thinking in the back of my head, one day we'll actually work together. And he calls me up out of the blue last, it was uh, September. He calls me up out of the blue last September, and had no uh, big plans, but he says, hey, I'd like to make another album, and I'd like to do it in L.A. I said, well, what's really going on in your life that you, know, you wrote all these songs? Because he already had the songs finished and demoed and recorded, and he's, he started mailing them to me, emailing them to me. I said, well, what's up in your life? He said, well, uh, I'm at the lowest point of my life. Everything's gone wrong. I had to move from San Diego back to Kansas. And then my grandmother died. My best friend uh, doesn't like me anymore. Uh, my band kind of broke up and, and isn't excited about touring anymore. My, uh, my wife and I are having issues. And uh, I'm lonely out here in the middle of Kansas. And all of a sudden, my dad gets sick and dies. All this at the same and time. What, like a, what span of time? Like yeah, that? all at the same time. And so he called me right after his dad died and said this. And I said, it sounds like I need to come there now, not in six months. I need to come there now. He goes, you're, I'm at the lowest point of my life. You know, you're great. I said, no, we got to record the album and I want to shoot a documentary on you now. He said, well, I don't have any money. I can't do that. You know, and I said, well, just figure out a way. Just believe in magic and it'll, it'll happen. Start believing. So he started believing in magic. I said, uh, it's just imagine money's going to show up and it will. So a friend of his calls him later that night and he tells his friend that this producer from L.A. wants to come out and record an album with him and he doesn't, doesn't have any money. And the guy says, well, I'll give you money. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. And so the next day he calls me up and says, magic just happened. And uh, he came, uh, he, he, he sent me money the next day. I got in my car, I put all my gear in my, car, in my car, and I drove to Kansas and recorded this album. We didn't have money for a recording studio. And I told him that didn't matter because I, I've, I've been a recording engineer all my life. I've, I've recorded over 120 gold records in my life. So recording music's easy, even in the rain, in the wind, with kids playing in the background, <laughs> whatever. So I recorded this whole album outside, live, in one take, while the band is all staring at each other in a big circle, with people, all their friends behind them, drinking beer and uh, making burgers. Was and that the, are you in a backyard? Kids or like jump on roping. Farm? Where you, where you we at? went on a farm. We went to eight different locations around, oh, wow. uh, around uh, Kansas and a couple here in, in uh, L.A. But, uh, or in California, one in San Diego. And we, uh, we ended up going uh, to uh, all these incredible locations. And like the f on the farm is really the, the basis of where uh, several of the recordings went. Inside of a barn, outside of a barn, uh, on the front porch of this house, by a river, in the middle of a street, in downtown. Downtown Kansas. Yeah, Kansas, yeah, which is like one little block, <laughs> one little block in Kansas. Beautiful street, beautiful town called Council Grove. And so we, uh, we just did incredible recordings that were impossible for most people to do. And not only did I record all the audio and the band record, play everything live, but I produced the music and I shot video cameras. I set video cameras all around and then I'd man one camera. And I edited all those video cameras back together to create the live video footage of him on here. So this isn't a concert DVD. 
it includes live music but what it is is it's it's this is a film about helping you evolve it help helping people to make a, a change in their life and to overcome their struggles so what happened was his his three questions what he, what he had were why are we here what are we doing and what is all this for he says those to me on the phone before i ever came here he said my life is so screwed up i have those doubts and i don't know what life is all about so that's why i went there and is is because he had doubts in his life because i knew that in in the processes of, of of us recording the music and me shooting the video of everything i would do all these interviews with him and then after the fact we work together to help him to overcome his problems and we'd show that in the film so that's what happens he overcomes all his struggles his best friends his best friend again his he and his wife work through all their marital problems the band's totally excited about the music and they're creating and having fun he's a believer in magic he's a believer in and not judging each other And see he didn't judge the band. He didn't judge his wife. So he, I think he was judging himself. Yeah, he stopped doing all that judgment on everybody and everything and started being appreciative and thankful. Very simple messages. And the flow of energy worked out again. All of a sudden everything worked out. He didn't get his dad back, but he he, he what he learned is all the lessons from from his dad going away, you know, his sadness and and shock and despair uh, all he learned the lessons which is uh life is short you, you, uh, don't waste it that be thankful be grateful be, like share make people laugh say i love you simple things yeah and so it's all in this film it's uh, there's spiritual lessons in this film helping the viewer to evolve but you don't do it in a preachy way It's done because you're watching this dysfunctional guy that's at the lowest point of his life. And he's working through the process. Work through the process. Right? Yeah. That, it strikes me because yeah. when you mentioned that he called mm -hmm. you and he said he, he you know, you told him that do the music now and let's do this now. Yeah. And he he said he was at the lowest point in his life and and your reaction was that's when you have to do it because you know, art is real. Art is mm -hmm. is is what comes from within. Mm -hmm. So It is, you apply that to the film mm -hmm. you know you're not you're not on a production schedule per se oh we're, we're, it seems like the guy was genuinely working his emotions yeah. his feelings his demons if you will you know oh, everything yeah. that was going on how, how is that putting together this film because mm -hmm. you, you must experience it through music but now it's in the visual spectrum I left here with a two-day drive to Kansas thinking I was going to be there for 10 days because I had to be back here because I was turning 50 that week. I was going to turn 50. And so I wanted to be here with my, my friends and family, you know. So I'm there in Kansas for 10 days and the easy part was recording the music. Well, the hard part was getting him to evolve and to grow up. So I recorded everything and I'm editing everything while well, my birthday came and went. And I stayed there for 45 days. Oh my God. Instead of 10. <laughs> wow. And then, of course, I had to drive back. And it, the drive back was another two days. It was exhausting. And, uh, but we evolved in the process. Because I, I thought I was going there to save him. No, I was there to save myself. I had two friends die that year. Wow. So I was going through the exact same issues he was with dealing with the loss of a loved one. And so what happened was uh, I needed to work through my issues. I'm not the one on camera, but I'm the one that's, that's understanding what he's going through. So I, as I was evolving myself, I was helping him to come through it. And it took me 45 days to evolve along with him. Yeah, so I, it, that was the best bir birthday present I could give myself is learning lessons and really focusing because we were in Kansas there wasn't anything to do but work on the film <laughs> you know and so we were working on the film every day and we were working on ourselves every day and a lot of sitting talking a lot of sunsets a lot of hanging out and crying and he he's a man 
he had no trouble crying. Because as an artist, you, you have to feel. Yeah, you can't create without emotion. Life is feeling. Art is feeling. But and when you go see a movie, when you go hear a piece of music, you don't remember the details of it. You remember the feeling it gave you. And so all this is, is to let him share his feelings he had at the time. He doesn't have those feelings anymore. Because he and his wife get along fine. His friend is fine. He was wired up in knots. We had to untangle the spaghetti, all the, you know, mess. And we straightened everything out enough that since then, he shaved his beard. He quit smoking. That's big. He smoked every, every day since he was 13 years old. Oh, wow. Till, till he's like 32. And he quit. Cold turkey. cold turkey. He said, I can do this. You know, and uh, recently, in this past week, he, he never, he was one of those guys that could barely change the oil in his car. <laughs> he recently rebuilt the engine in his car because the engine blew. So he, just so he took the whole thing apart, looked online and watched some videos, asked some questions of some friends, and rebuilt the engine in his car. Wow. Just his his evolution yeah was that drastic yeah if you if you start believing in yourself and start believing in possibilities instead of the the, the limitations. impossibilities limitations yeah you you wake up so he woke up during the whole process of this and in in fact he's inspired his friends uh, his uh, sister-in-law uh, and his his brother and some other friends of his have done things like quitting smoking, lost weight, uh, exercise programs, uh, just cleaned up their life and focused their energy and started being friendly and thankful and genuine with each other. And it's created a better community around everything. So it's contagious. So Love is contagious. Hate's contagious. Every laughter is contagious. Yeah. Smiles the are energy. contagious. Because it's energy. Yeah. And energy is not stagnant. Yeah. It flows. Yeah. So. For you, you mentioned the evolved, and then mm. very important. Mm. As a person, it, it's hard to change because it's mm. easy for someone to get stuck in their ways. Mm. For you, it, it's all about this journey, this evolution, this mm. this growing, this getting to know yourself better and appreciating everything else. Is it hard to take that as an artist and, and, and share that evolution? Or maybe, like in this case, like you said, you both helped each other. Well, you know, only if you're stuck in your own judgment. Once he got over the idea of like, it's okay to cry in front of another man and cry on camera. I can let go of my feelings. I don't have to, because I told him, we're safe. Anything that we record, if you don't like it, we can erase it and throw it away. We don't have to share it with anybody. You're just sharing it with me and this little camera. And so he felt safe. And once he started doing that, he became more honest with himself and let that energy go. And once he started letting the, the, the dam broke, the little hole in the dike or whatever, yeah. and it's the, the energy started flowing and change happened. So ch change happens when we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And he was sick and tired of everything in his life. He was at his lowest point. In fact, when, it, when I first called him, he said, why are you coming here? I'm in the worst part of my life. This is crazy. No one would want to watch this. Me exactly. being... Sad. <laughs> but he evolved. And everybody in his life around him really has evolved. He's, he's, he's really... And oh, funny thing. I didn't know anything about him. Except for he's a good singer-songwriter. We, we talked to him on the phone, but I didn't know his personal life at all. So he started to tell me on the phone. He said, Stone... Wait till I'm in, turn the camera on, right in front of you. Don't tell me another thing. Just just work on the music and I'll be there in two days. So I get there and I didn't know this, but his father that just passed away was a minister. Wow. Okay. And he wanted to be a minister. Hilarious. Because wow. he's a long haired yeah. hippie looking guy he, he with like a big beard and stuff. Of yeah, he's, yeah, and, and uh, he wanted to be a minister. And so he leaves his, his ministry and goes, the idea of ministry, goes to Kansas, I mean from Kansas, the whole way to, to San Diego, moves here, 
lives on the beach, grows his hair along, becomes the singer of a rock band, and then after uh, some le level of uh, decay there, where his wife had to go back to Kansas, and he felt lonely without her, he, so he went back to Kansas. So anyway, he, uh, he ends up back in Kansas with his tail between his legs like I was a failure. I didn't get to be the, the musician. I didn't get to, and yet he was still in Kansas being the musician, but he, he, his big dream of California in that, and little did he know his dad passes away and he turns into a minister in his own right. Because this whole thing, even though it's not any religious thing, yeah, no, no. it's got all the principles of any world religion. The golden rule. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, so if you know, basic is what the golden rule is. If that's the physical portion of it, which is, you know, uh, uh, do unto others as you would have done to, to to you. So he started treating himself with love, and that helped him treat others with love. And then when he treated others with love, they treated him with love. It's interesting yeah. that you mentioned, uh, you know, he went back feeling, you know, with his tell me to his legs mm -hmm. but I think that goes back to what you said in the beginning is that self-judgment yeah because he felt or believed that he failed mm -hmm. but how many people even here in LA locals never really take the initiative to pick up their instrument mm -hmm. or go to an open mic night mm -hmm. and just you know share their Brave. art they, yeah they don't have they don't take that step mm -hmm. because they're afraid he traveled literally halfway across the country mm -hmm. and did it yeah. for X amount of years. Mm -hmm. And maybe that journey, that part of his life just ran its course mm -hmm. and he had to go back. Yeah. But he wasn't perceiving it as such. He was perceiving it as failure. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes back to what you mm -hmm. said in the beginning, which is we judge ourselves unfairly because we're not loving ourselves mm -hmm. correctly. Yeah. Is, is that something you encounter often i mean you you work with artists all the oh, time most definitely yeah I, I i find that we're all uh uh creatures of habit and it is so easy to give someone a bad habit as a child uh, you're not good enough you'll never make it you'll never do that Stop and then all dumb. of a sudden you start believing the lies that other people are telling you yeah. So it's really uh, a practice, a habit you've got to, of reversing that and looking in the mirror and saying, I'm beautiful, I'm intelligent, I'm creative, I'm talented, I love myself. Even though you know I'm getting fat and my hair is falling out and I'm turning gray and I got wrinkles, <laughs> that's wisdom. You know, whatever. You, 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 you start loving, embracing whatever it is in your life that uh, allows you joy. Because what real success is, is not a Ferrari or a job or a relationship. It's your relationship with yourself and joy. Loving yourself enough to bring yourself joy and bring others joy, and then it comes back around. And so he started doing that. I'm doing it, and I'm hope hopefully we're, it's contagious. Well, that, I mean, it, yeah. it has to be because, like you said, it's, it's the trickle effect, you know. And, mm -hmm. and sadly, we are surrounded by negativity, you know, mm -hmm. people telling you what you can't do mm -hmm. as opposed to what you can do. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of the nature of of how I guess most people work. But mm -hmm. if, you, if you break it down, and, and I'm thinking particularly in his case, is when you get to the point mm -hmm. where you you can love yourself, accept yourself unconditionally, mm -hmm. and just have love for someone else for no reason other than them being themselves. Like you said, it's not the Ferrari, it's not the job, it's not the paycheck. If you can love someone for just being who they are without expecting anything out of it, that's, I mean, that's awesome. That's human, that's deep. And the first person to do that with has to be yourself. It has to, because if you're negative, you're gonna portray negativity. Yeah. And he sees he hit, he hit that corner, which isn't easy. He didn't like himself when I when I first got there. <laughs> he was he was really sad, you know. And uh, and he loves himself now. And uh, but not, not the type of love where, 
I'm better than you. Yeah, it's not arrogance. No. no, no. The, the, the trick is to love all your flaws, not to just see the good stuff. A lot of the new age stuff, just look at all the good stuff. Well, you can see the flaws and see the lesson or the problem you need to overcome in the flaws. That's, see every, they say every crisis is an opportunity to learn and grow. So when a problem comes to you or when you see a flaw in yourself, you can, you can overcome it. I was 30 pounds heavier uh, about two years ago, and I made a change in my life. I said, I'm not eating right. And I just made a simple little change. I've got to do better. And there's always better and better and better. There's always, like, it's like math. You can always add another zero. There's always better. And, and so I just it took myself up a couple rungs. The weight dropped off. My brain worked better, my joy worked better, my breathing worked better. better, And, and it's like uh, everything worked more smoothly. And uh, I did, th did that. And see, Jonathan's doing that with smoking. He yeah, quit smoking. smoking Huge. Yeah. From the time you were 17. Well, no, 13. 13 to yeah. 32. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a lifetime, a lifetime of addiction. He said he had a dream. The dream was, it came to him in his dream, you'll never be successful until you quit smoking. And I don't see that only as like success is a big check in the mail. I see that as happiness and health. I mean, it all goes together. I know very well when I, when I eat like Thanksgiving dinner, I go to sleep right away. And I pass out in front of the TV and a food coma, yeah. you know? And, and same thing with smoking cigarettes. It was causing him pain, physical yeah, it's, pain. It's a coping mechanism. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. I, I guarantee you, mm -hmm. as a former smoker, oh. smoking is, is, it is an addiction, but it is a complete and emotional crutch. Oh. That the minute something gets tough, the minute you're sad or something just heartbreaking happens, boom. You or you up. need a distraction. Yeah, you light up. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. it it's, it's all it is. It takes away from that. Mm -hmm. And then what? Well, your body becomes, you know, slowly killing yourself. Yeah, you feed, needs beans for it. Wow. So yeah, it, it's an emotional huh. coping. It's a coping mechanism. Uh -huh. So if, if you break that, like you said, you've obviously you've changed that mm -hmm. that habit, if you will. He's inspiring people, and it's he's good. not trying to inspire people. Like, look at me. No, no, no. In fact, when you watch the film, you realize this is just a genuine, real, regular guy going through struggles and being genuine enough and real enough and brave enough to share it. So uh, is he like, doing music again? Is he, or is he doing oh, he's, play, he's playing music every day. No, his, 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 he's, he's not a minister. He's, he's a musician. He's a singer-songwriter. And he's, he says very clearly, I don't really, I'm not preaching to you, and I really don't care if you totally disagree with me. I'm just sharing my experience. So uh, his ministering isn't ministering by slamming it in your face or yeah. beating it down your head. He's just sharing his experience. And then he, through that soft way of approach, it's actually inspired a lot of people. Yeah. And so is he back in Kansas? Is he back he's, in California? He's in Kansas. He's going to do his yeah. thing from there? Well, at the moment For he now. is because he and his wife are, are tied into this a small little town called Emporia, Kansas. It's, it's a beautiful little town. It's like uh, Emporia, E-U-M-P-O-R-I-A. <laughs> Emporia, Kansas. And uh, it's uh, just uh, southeast of uh, Kansas City. So it's pretty far it's over there. And uh, uh, beautiful land, though. And it's, we, we shot this at all, those, all these outdoor sites. In fact, if you take a look here, you, you, you'll see uh, this is Road to Nowhere. Here's your Road to Nowhere. Uh, we did these uh, outdoor things. This is a little church that's from the 1800s. doesn't have wow. any electricity or water run oh, through really? it. Just it's windows out and the, doors? out in the middle of nowhere. And, and you look all around it for miles, there's nothing. Not even an electrical wire. It, it's out in, the, out in the middle of nowhere. And I, on that, that day, it rained on us. I, I lost two cameras 
and a laptop compu computer that day in the rain. Yeah. Did they just start coming down out of the blue? Or? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait till you see the film. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll love it. It's it's an ama amazing moment. But uh, you know, we we were outside. Here's the middle of the street. We're actually set up in the middle of the street at night, and cars are driving past while we're recording. And you can hear them on the recording. <laughs> you know. Uh, and then we had a we had a choir on this this one here. But you know, we d we did a we did a lot of really cool stuff uh, to make this. And you know, you can see here directed produced, written, shot, and edited by me. And so, um, you know. Why Road to Nowhere, why that title? Well, very good question. It's actually, re read the front, Road to Now Here. What he does is he evolves from nowhere to now here. He, he actually changes his whole life. He actually becomes present here because see, when, he, when your dad dies, you're lost. Where am I? What am I doing? What is all this for? And when you realize all we have is this, like I could go die today. It could happen. But and all I had was this. And I, and I lost two friends this year. The, the, the year of this, I've lost two friends this year. And since then, and it freaks me out a little bit, but it also inspires me to go, don't Take waste advantage. it. So you recorded this last, la the end of last year? Or it, it, was, uh, it was about 10 months ago. Okay. And, but it takes six months to edit it. So, and then it took us another month to do all the artwork packaging. and get the packaging and get it back. And starting this past week, we just started putting it in film festivals. Nice. Culver City Film Festival. Have you heard of it? Yeah, we published a <laughs> And so the Culver City Film Festival, uh, Sundance, Slam Dance, South by Southwest. Those are awesome. three, three of the big ones. And then uh, there's a list I've got about 25 that we're, we're entering that right now. And uh, oddly enough, this, this is one of the big weeks for entering film festivals because they all happen in the winter, in the beginning of the year, January and February, so you have to enter now. So the timing of this is perfect. And, and so this film isn't, uh, is meant to help you evolve. It's meant to uh, help you deal with things on your own way. And I, took, I stripped out all the personal stuff, like my dad and the details of my dad and what shirt he was wearing and what kind of car and like who cares i kept it very basic i lost someone this is how i feel and so more of the experience pretty much. yeah and so what you see here is a guy going through some some stuff that is similar and common for everybody messing up your marriage relationship and not being a good communicator he fixes it he has a song called speak and then he talks about what he goes through in the process and how he how he sees sees each other and they're coming to terms with things same thing with with his best friend and uh, his band and being out on tour and all these funny little things but the, the the core of it is around loss of a loved one and how to deal with that and you know the, the real lessons are like love yourself don't judge each other believe in magic and it will happen and we actually did that and uh, one of our statements was, remember that everything is perfect, even when it's not. Meaning that if something bad happens to you, there's a lesson in there for you. There's, there's something you can find in there. So look for the lesson in all the problems. And so everything is perfect, even when it's not, because the worst thing it did was taught me a great lesson. Exactly. Yeah, so anyway, he's, he's really taught me a lot in the making of this. Is he going to come out for any of the film oh, festivals? Oh, yeah. Oh, most definitely. He'll oh, be man. here. Let He'll be know. here. I'd He'll be sleeping right there on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and Let you will. Know. I'd love to meet the no, guy. No, you, you will meet him. And, he, and he's the type of guy who will break out his guitar at all times and sing and play for you. Nice. And, and uh, brilliant alone, but with a band even better. Yeah. yeah. So can people buy a copy yeah. now or do they have to wait till the... the Film festivals are over? Roadnowherefilm.com. 
which I'm going to send you all that information. Okay. Road to now here, film .com. Uh, and uh, jonathanflag.com is his, his name, but I'll give you that card too. Uh, jonathanflag.com. Uh, those are two easy ways of doing that. We're all pu also putting it on Amazon and uh, hopefully iTunes shortly. That's awesome, man. Well, I'm glad you guys uh, yeah. let me know. This is, yeah, like I said, I can't wait to watch this.